My name's uh, Chris Davis and I'm a space scientist. I run a project to look at the sun using uh, some spacecraft known as Stereo and I investigate the Earth's atmosphere and how it responds to that. Well, the, the history of what's known as solar terrestrial physics is how the sun affects the Earth um, has a, a long and illustrious history. And actually, it started back in the 1920s with Edward Appleton, um, after whom the laboratory is, is partly named. Appleton discovered the Earth's ionosphere. And this is a, an electrified layer on the very edge of the, uh, the Earth's atmosphere, about 100 kilometers up. But Appleton realized that the Earth's ionosphere changed. It changed daily, it changed monthly, it changed year to year. And so in order to try and understand these changes, he set up a sequence of measurements. And what I've been trying to do um, is to actually make sense uh, of, to, of these old records, which we have in our archives. This is the only um, copy of them that exists, is this paper printing. And so this stack here represents a month's worth of the scans that were made. We've got over 70 years worth of these records now. And the, the first 20 years or so are on these, these paper records. And so they're, they're just in, a, in drawers in, a, in, a, in an archive. And what we want to try and do is to digitize these to allow scientists to get at the information. Because it turns out that the ionosphere is very sensitive to changes of solar activity. So that's all documented here. We've only really been measuring the sun from space um, for well, since the 1960s, I guess. This will stretch that record back to the 1930s and help us to understand how the sun's been changing over a much longer time period. So what it's doing is it's recording, it's sending up a radio pulse uh, and then it's measuring the time it takes for that pulse to be reflected. And then you change the radio pulse and you, you gradually scan through radio pulses. By doing this, you build up this trace here which tells you the, the strength of the Earth's ionosphere, and the ionosphere is responding to the sun. That the, the, the more intense the sunlight, the, the, the uh, more intense the Earth's ionosphere will be. So if there was a big explosion, a very, very uh, 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 intense flash of, of, of X-rays or extreme ultraviolet light from the sun, which we know now can happen when the sun's active, it would have affected the ionosphere, and these layers would have got much bigger. So by going back in history and looking at these, we can actually work out what the sun was doing back in the 1930s. We've got in, stored in one of the basements of this uh, building nearby, we have all these paper records. Uh, and uh, I think you need to see the, the rows and rows of filing cabinets to be uh, kind of aware of the enormity of the task that we've got at our hands in trying to digitize these records for, for sort of, sort of science. Uh, we have years and years and years of all these. So this one, for example, well, this is what was happening in the Earth's ionosphere on the 25th of January, 1935, at a quarter to 10 in the morning. And you can see that there's, there's some really peculiar things happening up this end. So there was, there was probably something interesting happening in the ionosphere at that time. But if you can imagine the technology, everything was, 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 was clockwork back then. So they had uh, machines to drag the film past the, 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 the screens, and they had uh, very mechanical systems by which they actually calibrated these data. So this is just one drawer in this cabinet. And then there's another cabinet over here which has um, uh, similar collection of, of films. And then round here, each and every one of these cabinets is stacked full of paper. And this is now uh, 1941, September 1941. So in the middle of the, uh, the Second World War, this was still an activity that was ongoing. In fact, these uh, sounders were, were part of what eventually became radar because these were range finding the distance of the ionosphere. And another experiment that was going on at the laboratory at the time was detecting uh, thunderstorms from their radio crackle. So that was direction finding. And Watson Watt, one of the guys who uh, was working at the uh, laboratory at the time, realized that here he had the means, he had the distance and he has the direction. And if you combine those two, he could actually detect enemy aircraft. So, as you can see, uh, we have more paper here, <laughs> more paper here, and these, these records uh, go on. So this is now uh, 1953, and all of these records only exist on these, these, in these paper forms. So the only way we can get to the information from these is by scanning them in, by digitizing them, and I don't even pretend to think that I can do that personally, but we want to try and get an idea of how long it would take the enormity of this task so that we can actually start to develop a strategy 
to get this information out because we now know a lot more about the ionosphere and what makes it change and about what uh, causes it to behave like it does. And so if we can then extract data from these, these images, we can get a, a really long time series of, of how the sun's been behaving and how the Earth's been reacting to it.